is Joy Halstead with Soapbox and tonight um, I've got something that's really kind of close to my heart and a daily frustration in my life. Um, so before I introduce our guests and tell you what we're going to be discussing, I want to say thank you to our underwriters. Uh, that would be Pieces Pizza by The Slice. It includes low-fat, vegan, and gluten-free options as well as a fine selection of beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for supplying pizza for the crew. 21st Street near Capitol Avenue in Sacramento, the number is 916-441-1949. And also um, our other co-host, James Israel's paper, The Humor Times. It bills itself as the world's funniest news source. Uh, the non-monthly Political Humor magazine is available worldwide by subscription in print or digital format. Subscription info along with cartoons, funny fake news videos, and more info can be found at humortimes.com. We'd also love to hear from you. Uh, if you're on Facebook, please check out our page and like us at facebook.com slash soapboxsack. And we also have a YouTube channel at Sacramento uh, it's Soapbox Sacramento, and we would love to have you guys check that out as well. We have a lot of older shows on that are a worthwhile watch, so please support it. Um, so tonight, um, I have a couple guys here that uh, I think highly of, and we're going to be discussing, I've called the subject the downside of public transportation in Sacramento, but mainly we're going to be discussing uh, Sacramento Rapid Transit and the issues that almost anybody that has anything to do with this service is, encounters at some point. And um, we have Russell Rawlings. He uh, is a Sacramento warrior for the people and also he was a candidate for mayor for the city of Sacramento. And I have Fabrizio Sasso. He's an executive director of the Sacramento Central Label Council, AFL-CIO. And we all have just different things to, to uh, bring to the table on this. But I'd like to start with Russell first, because you just got back from their meeting tonight. And I was hoping you could kind of give us some updates about what's going on right now. Right. Because of regional transit, I was able to be here from the board meeting, which was really convenient. Hopped on light rail. It took me about four minutes to get here. Uh, you know, so that transit commute time was really pretty good. Okay. I wish that all of my commutes to a certain destination were within that range, but mm -hmm. unfortunately it's not the reality. But um, yeah, I, I just got back from their board meeting tonight. It was a lighter board meeting. There were not a lot of attendees. Um, but regional transit is definitely taking notice of, of their deficiencies, I would say. They're, they're worried. Um, the board meetings now consist of a period where they kind of do a report on some of the initiatives that they've been working on, that is cleanliness and security. And tonight we also got a bit of a budget update. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to stay for all of that. But, um, you know, so they're taking an active interest in at least being aware that there are some problems. Now, I would kind of disagree with where their focus is on some of that, but it's good to see at least that there's awareness of yeah. some problems. And I have noticed um, they have new hires. They have more RT police now checking passes. Um, I tried to read up a little bit about, you know, what they were trying to do, and they wanted, they actually, I got like a, a some kind of form to fill out about, um, how they were doing, you know, a little thing they compiled for people that want to, you know, I went ahead and, because I, I am on their their Facebook page and everything, and I I complain every time there's a problem, so I'm I'm a thorn in their side because You must be pretty busy. Uh, <laughs> well, it's just every time I'm waiting for a train, I mean, I feel like moment, I'm losing all this time of my life waiting for a train or or when something breaks down, I'm standing there waiting, you know, for them to resolve it. And, and then being in the dark, like you hardly ever know what's going on because the communication is so bad. That's terrible. Um, and then I was reading that, um, of course, they had to get rid of some people. Would um, they get rid of like 20% of their staff? 
or 20 people, and um, they were mainly, you know, you, you probably know what, what types of um, work they were doing and, and why they got let go. Yeah. You want to speak to yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, recently they laid off uh, about 20 employees. Uh, uh, a, a, a big majority of those employees were administrative staff uh, that served uh, within um, within the uh, the capital division of uh, regional transit. And so, um, the the claim from the uh, the new general manager and the outgoing general manager, because it happened uh, right during the transition, uh, was that there was um, uh, not enough money. Uh, in the capital funds project and or the capital funds budget um, and because there weren't any uh, ongoing capital projects that they were working on uh, that they had to uh, release the staff um, we feel um, labor feels that they could have done it in a, in a different way um, many of the folks that they let go uh, they claim were close to retirement. That's not the case. Oh, oh. That's not the case. Okay. Um, no golden parachutes for them. No right? golden parachutes <laughs> for them, and we can we can talk about golden parachutes at RT and the and the culture that that's um, that 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 that's produced. Um, but really, the, these 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 folks, some of them have worked at RT for you know twenty years, a couple of decades. Um, had had they love their job. They love serving the community. Um, they are, they're a part of it, they're friendly faces that people uh, recognize, um, and we're let go uh, without, any, um, without any kind of dignity. Uh, they, a lot of these folks were uh, walked out by security after having served, their, nice. having, having served the agency for over 25 years. Um, the, some of them were uh, short of retirement and short of receiving um, their full retirement pay. Uh, and so uh, we, we, we think that this is a problem. There's, uh, there's, a, there's a belief uh, by some of the employees that were, that were fired that they were targeted. Um, they, these were targeted firings. Uh, it was disproportionately against women and people of color. Um, so this is a big issue um, that we take very, very seriously within the Labor Council and Labor community. Um, we feel that they could have done it a different way. Um, you know, RT executive management claims that this was necessary because they have budget issues. And uh, there's no hiding the fact that they have budget issues. They yeah. certainly do. Yeah. Um, they were uh, about $2 million short of their budget projections for this year. Uh, and so uh, they offered a, um, they postured a question to the public. It's, a, it's, a old, it's an old thing that uh, I think that we've experienced before in the past, but guns or butter. Uh, in this case, it was either service cuts, cutting bus lines right. and light rail service, or it was eliminating positions. Uh, and with service cuts, we know that there's an elimination of positions. And so with uh, the elimination, strict eliminations of positions, um, they were able to uh, withhold from uh, having to cut service lines, cut bus lines. And so um, they, at the end of the day, they, they thought, they felt that they were you know, being saviors of the public good by not having to cut these service lines. But at the end of the day, uh, they really uh, displaced a lot of families in well, the process they, they of They make firing. all these proposals and then they do a 180 and they get rid of people. Right. You know, it's like, I wasn't happy about the cuts for the service that they were going to do, but I also don't like to see 20 people lose, you know, their ability to survive. Mm -hmm in you know in jobs that they've been in forever and do deserve something for that right. i mean to get walked out and without any kind of you know dignity or anything is just horrible right. and they don't deserve that no I, nobody deserves being being walked out of a job that you've committed your life to your entire working career in, in many in many circumstances uh, being walked out by a security guard in front of all of your coworkers who are a part of your family. Um, there are several people within regional transit who are very close to retirement. Um, and had they offered up uh, a, an opportunity for people to, like a uh, to take a severance, which yeah. they offered, they offered these folks a severance, but 
um, but not to the extent that it is going to make up the time lost for not having worked the last year or two right. years left until their retirement. Had they had they offered this up, um, they could have perhaps made their budget um, goals for this year, yeah. but they didn't do that. And uh, in the process, they, they also uh, extended a, a service contract with their former general manager and uh, offered uh, a supplemental pension in the, in, in right. the yeah. yeah that yeah I was kind of like how does that work you know it's like this guy did not do a very good job but yet he gets you know he gets a nice little bonus at the end of all this and can walk away and these other people what are they walking to you know they're going to be back to, on the street trying to get jobs and whatnot um, so that's terrible um, but as a daily rider, you know, it's just, it's so frustrating. You know, I had an experience where I was trying to go to work. You know, I need to be at work. I need to be there at a certain time. And I go to get the bus. And the bus is either late, it's early, <laughs> or it doesn't even come. Right. And I don't feel like I have any, um, I have no control over it. I can't rely on this system and I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen students that can't get to their classes and they end up getting kicked out of their classes because you know inadvertently they're late or they they can't get to their classes and people with jobs they're hurting people that have employment and they need to be at this job and you know your employer is not going to be really understanding of the fact that that bus didn't come or that train broke down. They don't care. You know, I mean, it's a problem. And they, I, I believe that, I don't know if this new leadership is going to do the job either because it sounds to me like they're really more interested in, you know, propping up this new, um, the Golden One Center and providing transportation on the backs of taxpayers and other and frequent riders. Did you want to speak to that, Russell? Uh, yeah, it's funny you mention that. Actually, part of the presentation that I, that I uh, was able to see tonight was focused uh, directly on uh, service to the Golden One Center. Now, this is the first time that RT uh, board has ever been given a direct presentation on any service that they were going to provide to the uh, to the center, but they're now saying that they will run trains at a higher interval, still without specifying exactly what that interval is. But I feel like now that they're moving in a direction that's very dangerous, they're making promises, and one of the promises, the bullet point, literally said, "No one will be left behind as a result of the event at the arena," and. I, Someone asked, and they were like, what if, what if everybody tries to get on? And they said, oh, the trains will. So that's the thing. We're going to run them more often so that people won't be on the train that's at once. That's absurd. And it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's like they're already running 15 minutes uh, only during the daytime hours, mm -hmm. and that's like 9 to 5. And then outside of that, it's every half hour. And on the weekend, it's all, every half hour all day long. Or hours so, in some cases. Yeah. Right, right. And then the buses, of course, the, the over... Half of the fleet runs once an hour, and some of them uh, do run a little better than that. But you know, you're talking about uh, transit wait times of excess of 30 to 45 minutes to an hour. And I, I just, I don't see how they could clean things up in the short amount of time and guarantee anything at this mm -hmm. point. I mean, this well, whole can. this whole thing was an afterthought. It should have been when they were well. The whole arena thing was done behind closed doors. People didn't have any say in it. And now they're just, that was like the priority. And they didn't even think about everything else beyond that, unfortunately. And uh, uh, people, like general people who ride it in half, that's how they, their general mode of transportation is, are going to be uh, impeded by this. You know, and that's what upsets me. You know, when they were talking about moving the, the one station there at K and um, 7th. They're getting rid of it. They're taking it away. They're still doing that. Yeah. I mean, it pisses me off because <laughs> that's my route, you know. Any, anyone who's lived here a number of years knows that that station was just moved 
in 2007. Yeah. They moved half of it over a block at a huge cost to people, huge cost to the public. And now they're removing it all together? It, it just, it, some of these things don't make any the sense. The planning is just horrible. Yeah. Right. It's uh, non-existent. <laughs> and, and back to the ridership issue around the Golden One Center, there's one thing that I think we as, as writers or as people who have a stake in seeing the agency operate uh, at a functional level uh, agree with, with, uh, with the new management out in RT is that the city does not, have, does not have their act together when it comes to the opening of the Golden One Center mm -hmm. and how they're going to handle the, the traffic uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, in preparation for that, uh, they are going to double or triple uh, their intervals of service at particular stations to, to, to bring riders in along. But you make a salient point in that uh, what happens to the riders that sustain RT on the mm -hmm. long run, are the people who use it every single day, are they going to be pushed out? Uh, and there is this culture within regional transit uh, it's a it's a very it's a very nasty, uh, despicable culture of resenting their ridership. Mm -hmm. uh, they do not like the people that sustain uh, that agency uh, day in and day out. Uh, the people who ride the bus, people like me, you, Russell here, and people I met today, I was talking to today. They 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 do not like those riders, and that what they're trying to target are what they call choice riders. Mm -hmm. These are people who uh, would use RT, uh, normally would use RT, have a small commute, say less than five or ten miles, and would uh, commute to the downtown core uh, for work or for leisure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, these choice riders don't use RT because uh, RT has perpetuated uh, a stigma of, uh, of the system not being safe, not being clean. And this is a, this is a full frontal attack on the people who work in RT, who, mm -hmm. who, who do their damn hardest to uh, clean the system, right. to maintain the system, that keep the schedules on time as, as best as they can with, a, with, uh, with an aging fleet. Right. You know? uh, they do not like their writers uh, because they think that their writers scare off their choice writers. Mm. These are the people who would otherwise use the system. Um, and so they've offered a couple proposals. One being that they would offer free rides to the Golden One yeah, Center. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, that was in the paper a few months ago. So why would people who can afford a $100 basketball ticket or a $500 Paul McCartney ticket, why would they want to use RT for free? They could pay the $6 fare that it costs to use RT for the day. Uh, just like anyone else can, right? They also want to, they're proposing using uh, private services like Uber and Lyft to uh, take riders from their homes to the nearest um, light rail station or bus stop mm -hmm. using public funds to give them a discounted rate. No. This is atrocious. I'm not paying for that. The, the, this is, <laughs> these are companies that have well-documented histories of employee abuse. They don't even recognize their workers as employees. Uh, on top of that, these are competitors to RT. Right. Offer a, a good system that works for all riders, whether they are choice riders or they're daily riders that mm -hmm. use the system every single day. Offer, offer something that works for them instead of contracting out and privatizing your services. And, and so the point is, is that, <clears throat> that they need to recognize and do better outreach and do better public relations marketing with the people that use the system every single day. And instead of proposing cuts that would disproportionately di uh, uh, affect these riders, and these are people of color, these are people in poor communities that rely on the system, not just to get them to their job, but they rely on the system to take them to the laundromat or take them to the grocery store. Right. Reach out to them. Ask them why they're not using the service. Right. Ask them what, what do they need? How can they be better serviced? Mm -hmm. Then they will see an increase in ridership and they'll reach their fare box recovery and hopefully they'll be able to reduce their fares in, in the long term. They could bring people back. You know, it, it's, it's people just quit riding it because it's dirty. Um, it, there's, it's just running crazy. Like there's no checks and balances. Like, you go to the stations, you don't know who you're going to run into there. There's, some, there's been some violent people there. 
Um, I know now that they're trying, you know, and then this, the whole security thing is a whole other issue that we're, none of us were happy about when they uh, hired G, was it G4S like, mm -hmm. for another, did another year contract. But they, they can't do anything. They're, all they're there to do is observe, you know. I think a good question to ask RT, any of us, any of us, if we have an opportunity to talk to executive management is, is there an increase in, in safety issues year over and year over year? Uh, is there is there any proof that there are real safety issues, mm -hmm. or is there, or is this really a perception of safety, a perception of safety? And what I mean by that, uh, and I mean this, and I'm going to say it very bluntly, uh, this is uh, the perception of safety is a race issue, mm -hmm. is a race Absolutely. issue. Absolutely, their writers are people of color and homeless people. and homeless folks, mm -hmm. people who don't have uh, don't have. Uh, the economic advantages that a lot of us share in, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 to say that there's a sa safety issue when there really isn't one, you're, it's a perception of safety because these are not the riders that they feel should be on RT uh, or should be on the, a bus or, or or a light rail line, and so this is a real problem. These this is this is dog whistle politics at the very at the at the very greatest here, right. and and this does not belong in our community. This type of talk. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, so I think it's it's best if we were, and I employ anyone out there who's listening uh, to to ask to ask management within RT if there is a real safety issue, if there is an increase in calls for service that's disproportionate to uh, to the increase in crimes that naturally occur in the rest of society, right. and you will find that that does not exist. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, I'd just like to add that tonight, too. So in the presentation, you know, the, their new heading direction of wanting to report and be more transparent, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're bringing on all of this data that they are accumulating now of calls for service and other things that previously were completely unknown. Yeah. So all of a sudden we're getting this deluge of data I, and, I we're get, and we're being told, oh, this is how it's always been. And I don't buy that. I, I believe, and uh, Fabrizio mentioned it, you know, that in, in treating their, their riders, the ones that have sustained the system, the ones that have been forced to use it because they have no alternative, now RT is throwing more fare inspection officers on trains. Mm -hmm. So yes, they're seeing an uptick. And actually, I heard the head, the head of security tell, he slipped up, I think, but he said, you know, it's helping keep people away. <laughs> and you know, so this is about priorities, right? You can either have a transit system that moves people around, it serves people, right. or you can have a, a transit system that serves a very exclusive elite group of people for very special events. Yeah. And like, I think like that that's arena. what we're doing. <laughs> that's where we're headed. Yeah. And so to call these other riders that have supported the system for so long criminal, is just disgusting yeah. and the light rail tickets that are being given out there I mean they were congratulating themselves on the amount of uh, just in the last week how many they had given out so yeah those numbers are up and you know but you've got to look beyond that you have to look deeper and uh, you know the the part that it, they don't get the revenue goes to the city okay. and it goes to I think it's a smaller percentage goes back to actually to RT because I asked one of them one time, I'm like, you know, how much does it cost for a ticket? You know, who's benefiting by this? And then some of these people that are getting these tickets, they're never going to be able to pay it. Nope. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just, and, and the, I think it was like $130, which is just ridiculous. And that's if you're able to pay it out. Right. Yeah, you're criminalizing a, a group of people who rely on this service as a means to move them to and from their their destination. Mm -hmm. These are the people who rely on this service, and to 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 give them a ticket. It's like giving a, a homeless person. It. And I don't want to compare our T riders to the homeless, but but the fact is that it, it the the lar by and large the majority of people who use this service are people who need this service mm -hmm. that can't yeah. afford a car, 
can't afford a taxi cab or, or an Uber, and so they rely on this service, and therefore they don't have the means to pay these tickets. And it's just, it's as if you're giving somebody a ticket for, for loitering who can't afford it. Uh, you know, a homeless person, for instance, you know, it, it's, it's criminalizing them uh, to a point, it, it follows them too, by the way, if they're not able yeah, to pay for it. Yeah. So. And it, it doesn't benefit anybody. No. Yeah. And the cost of the city or the cost of the agency to enforce this, the cost of the taxpayer ultimately is greater than actually just letting this person ride for free. Well, we have like about two minutes left. So um, <laughs> is there any, you know, takeaway from this, Russell, that you think um, people should know? Sure. You know, I don't want it to seem all doom and gloom either. There is, a, there is an alternative. And that alternative is to see a system that does move people around. Now, how do we get there? It's going to take a huge amount of care from the public. It is going to require that you ask of your electeds that sit on that RT board and RT board and or RT staff and management, all of these things. It's going to take letter writing. It's going to take showing up at board meetings. It's going to take all of these things, and it's going to take it from the people who wish that they could ride RT. Yeah, and I, I tell people constantly when they're complaining and something's happening, please fill out that form. Go online and fill out that incident report. I actually did get some response from one once. So, I mean, it's not all for nothing, and it's only to improve the system that they have. Mm -hmm. And, and as far as um, these new people that got hired, um, are they these ticket takers? They're not police. No, they, they, they're they're actually they are um, they're they're transit uh, attendants. Okay. Um, and they, they're they're unionized. Um, okay. And uh, they're not contracted out through G4S or okay, any, well, that's good yeah, to any know. other agency. But they, but you know, I think this is a, a transition period for RT. We're optimistic about the leadership, the new leadership that's come on board. Um, we feel that there's an opportunity for us to uh, make a cultural change in, in, the, uh, in the agency and make, make some structural changes to the organization. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for being here. And I hope this enlightens some other people and maybe brings people back to our tea to make it a better system for everybody. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks my first time being here since Jeannie, so. Oh, really? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You're, you're doing a great job, by the way. It's a crisis situation.